Appointing uh, Thogden as the director of football, it's been an experience. And it's been an incredible one. This is gonna have no bitch. They know they're in a game. Manchester! It's fucking rattle. If I knew what I was in for, I shouldn't have taken this role. Respect us, okay? The YouTuber need to put them out. said they were shit. My name is Michael Monsoor, and I'm the uh, president and uh, chairman of, of Manchester 62. To see him come out, it was like became like a reality. I felt like I already knew him before he stepped off. We both had the same look in our eyes. It, it's time for the real work to begin. Let's, let's get going. I picked Gibraltar because I like the idea of the league. I've posted a lot of news about football. You've got 10 clubs sharing one stadium and they're building a new stadium as well. People want to see that connection between me and the club. The place is heading in the right direction. It's a British colony. I just got excited by it. You are helping already, man. I mean, I, I, I told him to. Thogden represented uh, a lot of what we want to be able to achieve. Creating this sense of awareness, but also understanding and very much an open door policy to think of new things. We're going up this cable car here in Gibraltar. There's apparently monkeys up there. Oh my God. No. I don't like his looks, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so the city of Gibraltar ended by the white line where we were. He's somebody who believes in everything that he does, and he works hard. And somebody who's been in the film business, you know, as long as I have, I know how hard it is behind the scenes, carrying a camera and doing content. It tastes great, and it's fresh. Cheers. How is it? Mm. I'm giving that an eight. To be able to do it so consistently, he's the perfect person to bring in for us to learn how to make another step, a unique step forward. You're going to get a lot of young people coming to the stadium, you know, wanting yes. to be a part of Just texting your friends and you just teach yeah. them the chance. And then you've got something for the future. I wanted to show the directors and owners of this club that I can make a difference. We were doing everything all at once, but it was just great to be with a board and, and understanding what they feel to be at a football club and what it's like to have me. I was just very proud that they wanted me in their place. Off. When there's food involved, you can't control the monkeys. We're getting out of here. Wait, what? What's going on here? Oh, oh, oh. I can teach you a few things, actually. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, that would be amazing. Thank you. The effect that, uh, that TikTok had in the story of uh, Manchester 62 on Gibraltar football was it very much matched what has happened you know so far um, in locally in that we created something that was really new and now that people got to see it it started to change the perspective and now feel players going out and wearing headgear and committing to something truly special a mission to reduce um, concussions and you know to create safety in football is a beautiful story the story that's existed throughout but it wasn't told in a lens at that level, you know, from a mainstream level for people, especially young people, to connect. We've seen Gibraltar, now it's time for the press conference. So I need to change my way, you ready? Oh, it's time for the real business. You get the pin on the suit. The impact on Gibraltar football in the outside world, I think, was quite positive. The comments were incredible. Views are great, but the comments themselves were so supportive of the club and the mission. <laughs> oh, what? How are you doing? You good? It's just me, it's just me. That one kid who bowed down to me just put everything into perspective, like, Kids out here know you so well from YouTube. <laughs> 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 I've seen it all. What's your name? Jordan. Great to meet you. Yeah. You support Manchester City now, yeah? Goodbye. You never feel that until you go to the place and see it firsthand. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great to meet you. Thogda just became a religion in, in Gibraltar, this kid. <laughs> Touching his feet and he was like, I love your videos, etc. I've never seen anything like that. But as excited as they were, it just got crazier and crazier. They were also so respectful and that people forget that the initial excitement because they're young 
was amazing. Explaining uh, yep. to Theo how it works in regards to registration, the timelines, right. for example, so if we run into any issues tomorrow, and he'll, he'll understand why from his okay. perspective. I didn't know what I was gonna say. Was everyone just gonna laugh at me and call me this YouTube guy, YouTube tactics? What are you doing here? It stays there for the three days, so it'll give you your official title as director of football, and the fact that the board of directors and, and the chairman, me and Michael, have invited you to, to be a director of football Manchester for those three days. If we have an offer for extension it, it's as, as one of the directors of football, it's in there as an it's, offer. It's actually, there's a, there's a remit in there that um, we can either, if the board feels like it, either extend the director of football or offer a consultancy or, or other directorship appointment. HGP is a homegrown players. So that's mm. going to be someone who's basically based in Gibraltar, who's been based in Gibraltar for X amount of years, and it's considered as a HGP player. They're going to be five in the eleven. In the eleven, it's going to be yeah. five at all times. How many know. days do you have to be living in Gibraltar to? It's going to be two issue. years. Do I think that he could handle himself 100%? I mean, when you look for a director of, of football, there's a lot of people who are in that position who honestly know probably half as much, you know, as Theo. That's just true. This is not a rocket science. We're not the Premier League. So that increases the value of Gibraltar's players, yes. right? Adult players. Adult players. Yeah. How many players do Manchester 62 average from Gibraltar in the eleven? Um, we're averaging lately. We're averaging five, six players. Okay, so you're just six, six, just edging. It's not a lot of HGP strikers out there. Mm. Um, Theo Pizarro is another one, another HGP striker uh, that we can utilize. Yeah. Something that we've had in the past was that we couldn't retain them because money was an issue. We were playing without the budget, mm. so we didn't have the funding. So obviously, we we were feeders mainly for the big clubs. The problem we've also faced is many players have been going to Spain. This is a, 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 a general sort of oh, really. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And they, they let too many go to space. Yes. How did Theo fit in during his first director's meeting? It was like a, a piece of the puzzle. And that was actually really important because our directors represent Gibraltarians. You have the director of operations, Alan Bulo, just came on. You have Sean Cruz, all of them Gibraltarians. You have Sean Cruz. And then you have Randall Adorino, who's also been part of football in Gibraltar his entire life. I asked the manager, the head coach, if he wanted any ball boys. He doesn't want any ball boys tomorrow. It takes longer. We are the underdogs. So I see. We want, uh, everything. We want, we want that's, the nil-nil that's, that's, penalties. Yeah. That's tactical. The introductory meeting was about learning. That's what we do for any director of football who came in. This is our match day prep. This is what we do moving forward. These are the expectations for each department. And he fit in immediately. When you hear my answer as to why we brought him in and you actually see the story play out, this is not up one big publicity stunt. When you are dealing with a club who is creating purpose beyond the pitch, that is trying to create awareness that it's okay to put on protective headgear and go out and potentially protect your future as a player. You know, that you can inspire young people to want to protect their future and still play the game they love. You know, you're a club that represents spreading awareness for dementia, you know what I mean, and, and Alzheimer's and that commitment. There's no such thing as a publicity stunt. Everything that you do matters. First meeting complete, all this information in my head, I'm just trying to like, I'm still living off like four hours sleep. But we got the press conference now, I'm gonna sign the contract. It's all very official. Who's the go, Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Yes. And then the press conference, I started giving out little badges. I nearly fell on the table. There was so much love. And I just thought if I could convert these guys into loving Manchester 62, I saw potential. Here we go. That was an absolute invasion. I didn't know there was this many kids that knew me in Gibraltar, but it's amazing to see how many people love it. The intelligence he has in understanding the game, and the excitement that, that he brings and just the energy around him because of his awareness of the game is something I think Manchester 62 can learn a lot from. Why did the locals leave uh, negative feedback to the appointment? I wasn't, I can say I wasn't surprised. We're really honored to have you, Theo. So, yeah. once you sign it, we we'll become official. And then there we go. But I don't think it's fair to generalize locals as much, but more in regards to the directors. Maybe certain clubs that might have been frustrated, they have friends, etc., and they, they talk and go, this is a publicity stunt. And I honestly don't feel negative about them at all. I think that they just don't know what this is yet. Welcome to Manchester. Thank you very much. They're not paying attention enough to it, and I respect that. That's normal. People react before they actually think. What do you want to like, achieve um, with Manchester 62? I want, I want to see the play in Europe. That's the end. And it's not just winning trophies and playing in Europe, there's, there's more to it. It's actually 
raising awareness about the principles of this football club. I was up here. That was special. It all happens at once. I'm going to sign the ball now. I don't know what's going on. Media full, first day complete, overwhelmed by the turnout. But it's just the beginning of this Gibraltar trip. Match day is upon us. St. Joseph's, there can only be one winner. Morning, Joshua. Morning, big, mate. Big day. We've got a uh, conference meeting at 12. We're going to do a march with loads of fans to the stadium. We're playing St. Joseph's. They've given us a 9% chance. My role as a director now is to bring as many fans to that stadium to support Manchester 62. Every match, to be honest with you, it's it's nerve-wracking. I have to be honest with you, though, it, was, it felt different than before. Bookies have given us a 9% chance of winning today. Even if we lose by one goal, we've shown fight. We are completely written off. I don't know who does those, those numbers and why. Um, that's why I don't necessarily look at them. Plus, I don't, uh, I don't bet. I didn't feel like we had a 9% chance. <laughs> What Thogden did was not only create and push this, but also legitimize it in a way of committing with these guys, come back to the games, and that's what happened after. Like, come back and do the marches moving forward. This is fun, this is how football should be. And I mean, I was I was more than thrilled and honored. Here we go! Who are we? 62! Who are we? 62! The attendance probably in this match quadrupled uh, what the expectation was. When you've got an American owner, you're the one who's going to have to create the chance. It's the Americans, they don't know it as much. He comes over to me like, you're going to have to make this happen, man. I... So when we're doing the march, I'm trying to think like, oh, what chance do I know? Which players? I'm trying to learn all the player names to try and connect everything. <laughs> March over. We're getting everyone together. We need to make as much noise as possible. Yeah. 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 What do we think of shit? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then we started singing, as they do in England, what do you think of shit? St. Joseph's, the opponent. Their director of football was sat there and he was picked off. He was so pissed. Son of a gun to the pitch, okay? Respect us, okay? The YouTuber need to put them out. Come on, they I'm still learning Spanish, so I, I don't know. I can't fully translate. They just wanted to create a bit of atmosphere. That's all we wanted to do. We didn't want to get physical and uh, yeah, he didn't really take it so well, but it was a great, uh, a great sign of the passion we had in our first game together. To come down and act that way and to show that behavior, it was, it was a reflection of, of not understanding, you know, what the next step is, you know what I mean? And not honestly respecting fans for being fans. For the day, every now and again, where football can be magic. It can be absolutely magic. Today can be magic for all of us if you remember what that man next to you sacrifices and puts in. When it gets tough today, and it will at some point, expect that storm, think of your mate, and put in that extra yard. Una, go, three, when I took this role as board of director of Manchester 62, I didn't think I'd be the one starting the chant, but these kids had turned up for the football and to meet me, Thogden. How do I turn them into Manchester 62 fans? It's gonna be. After a few early breaks, we started to get the hang of things, but it was just three minutes in when St. Joseph's made a marauding run forward. It fell to their midfielder, who slotted it nicely into the back of the line. A real reality check for Manchester 62. Their small section of fans went wild. We're 1-0 down already. Story of our season. It's hard for having a club with, you know, what's an XG as high as ours um, to not be in a better position. <laughs> But I also understand what it's like when you do a transition in a new club. You have a, a lot of players playing together, haven't played before in that system, haven't played just together as well, and then we signed 23 contracts during the transfer window. So I've seen that happen more than more than once this season. <laughs> To 
give an idea of the commitment and how committed you know Thogden was when he was there and how committed the fans were to him he's he's like coming up with names and pulling up chants and all, I mean he worked from the moment that <laughs> the march started through the match I knew the long term picture this is so important you get a few kids to support this team and in the future they're checking the results they want to go to the game they're getting tickets that's the key <laughs> My kids back in the U.S. watch this game, and usually it's it's pretty boring to watch, you know, a Gibraltar football league game. And they were glued to the TV, and they thought it was the funnest experience they had. That meant a lot. Half-time, 1-0 down, manager Jamie McDonough spoke to the players. The first 90 seconds, fucking thing. Then we pass. What are we doing well? Tell me what we're doing well. Come on, speak up. Okay, we'll Man up now. We'll switch on. Berto down twice, we'll switch on. Talk on all the time. Switch on, Berto talk, grand's on all the time. We were able to get one in. You know, especially after the half, um, I thought that we would, you know, be able to at least, if anything, as a transition team succeed. Thing is, though, you can't bitch at me and Kevin and say it's not bitching. This bro, this bro, is, no, no, I'm not bitching. I'm not, no, I'm not talking about you. I'm getting yelled at on the field to work, work harder, work harder, to yeah. press that guy and do someone else's job. Who picks this team? You do, but I gotta listen to my teammates on the field. If you're yelling, yeah. if someone's yelling press, I'm gonna step, and then that's if the ball true. slides to my mid, that's then true. I get blamed for both. That, that's yeah. true. And that's all I've heard. I wasn't nervous going into the half. I was like, okay, now we're getting back to playing the Manchester 62 football. And, uh, and I thought we had a good chance. I make the decisions. I get sacked when I'm wrong. You follow the decisions. I take the blame. You follow the decisions and you win. You get the credit. But you must follow what's being asked. They know they're in a game. We've hit them. We've been at them. The intensity is there. Now let's go get the goal and get it in the fucking face. Let's come away with a fucking win. Do this. One, three, two, three. Match us up. Back out on the pitch, I was doing everything I can to fire up the fans for the beginning of the second half for the players to walk out to. My favorite moment of that match was the fact that they, they continued to cheer on these guys after the second goal all the way through to the end because those guys deserved it. St. Joseph's score a second. It was my job now to keep the atmosphere going no matter the result. They said, stop throwing things. Just, you can sink, just stop throwing things. So we kept singing and it annoyed them that we just took their reasoning and continued to sing straight after. And as we did that, they got mad. They thought, this can't run. <laughs> So another delegate comes up and grabs the, the, the drum piece off him. And then we're thinking, what's going on? Why is he trying to stop our atmosphere? Everybody's allowed to sing at the football. I think that it was a situation of them not being, being prepared to handle real fans. <laughs> He's a good guy. I talked to him afterwards. I've never seen him react like that. But you don't grab a fan. And that's when I had to step in. I'm a dad first, you know, and the president of a football club second. And if I see a 15-year-old kid, you know, where somebody's grabbing, trying to pull the drumstick out of his hand, you know what I mean, aggressively, and being aggressive with it, that's not, not on my watch. It was off the rails, and it was something that the, the Gibraltar FA need to Understand that if fans are going to come to the ground, you have to look after them. There was no stewards there. Will I receive fines from this match? I'm, uh, I'm expecting it. Yeah. I hope I'm not, though. 
Listen, if it, it's a step forward. Let's be honest. It's a step forward if we don't get fined for this. It's a step forward for Gibraltar football. If they don't sit there and go, somebody threw a bottle, we're fining Manchester 62. I don't know how the report's going to play out. I'm sure that it's going to be a completely different version of the actual truth. Full time, Manchester 62 are knocked out the Rock Cup, meaning no Europa Conference League this season. Nobody ever, ever, ever succeeds without failing. There's no such thing as success without failure. Ultimately out there, I was proud of every single one of you. Because you did the two things that we demand. Be proud of yourselves. Really can. I don't think anyone is in this changing room now thinking I couldn't give any more. Fucking well done, boys. I'm fucking proud of you all. But it was time to head to the dressing room and speak to the players after what was a difficult 90 minutes. <laughs> The Rock Cup in this league is massive with the European spot up for grabs but to see how up for some of the players were for having a chat and speaking about the result and even going for a drink after the game that meant everything that showed that I felt a part of this club my first match as director ends in defeat but this game was so much more than that we created a community but let's be real no good story begins with success we have to work hard to find it and finally on day three we had some important duties as a director before we leave Gibraltar. The match is finished and usually this is where I end my match day vlog, but no, this is a documentary. We go one step further. Day three arrives and I'm negotiating contracts with actual players for next season. Right, Lucas, nice to have you here, mate. Nice How's things? Feeling well? Yeah, really good, man. Um, enjoying my time up here. I've got Lucas Reed to the left of me, a 20-year-old English guy, just came from Borough Academy, which is obviously a massive step for Manchester 62 to get someone from a championship academy playing and starting. He got an assist last game where he did a flip flap. It was insane. I watched it on the live stream. We want this guy for next year. We want him to sign the contract and the owner put the job on me to make it happen. That's why I'm here today as a director of football to offer you uh, a contract extension, which means you'll be here from next season because Michael, the, the owner, believes in you. You have a great relationship with the team, with Jamie. And after seeing how you perform, I think you offer a lot to the team. So if that's something that you'd be willing to do, yeah. I think we should uh, get you on the contract. Get the ball rolling. Let's do it. Yeah. Thanks. Pleasure. Lucas Reed, our star midfielder, the main man. <laughs> and eventually I did sign the deal. The guy's a legend and we'll see him there next year. Then walks in the best 17-year-old in Gibraltar. This guy had offers from everywhere. It was a bit tougher. I put the contract in front of him. So we know you're on an 18-month deal, which is great. But we were thinking further ahead because, like you said, you've been here for so long. And we want to offer you a little upgrade on your contract from that moment on. So after your contract finishes, you can either take a six month deal or a 12 month deal after your 18 month finishes. Both these deals would have bonuses, one for the Rock Cup final. And if we win the Rock Cup, I feel dull for, but I'm thinking about going to university when I finish school. Yeah. But I want to speak and sign a long term and get loaned out to a club that wants some study. And then when I come back, same back with Manchester. He wanted to make his decision later on to see where he's at because he's already playing at GFA under 21s, which is the national team under 21s. He's 17. He's way above his level. But do you feel that maybe going to university would affect your rhythm of your form right now? You're doing really well in Gibraltar. It could. If I'm going to sign, I think about it next year, see how my football's going. Hopefully get called up to the senior GFA. Maybe take a year off from school and then go to university when my contract ends if I do the extension. But we thought at least if anything we can start the conversation mm. so he knows that we're valuing him early on, which is important. It was difficult because he knows his worth. I think he's also got pushed from his parents where he wants to go to university. I see a speciality in you for football and you've got to be very careful that when you go to Cardiff or you go to any university, You've got to be able to make sure that you still focus on what you're good at. That's his passion. That's his. Yeah. He needs to know that. Yeah. You know, education is great, but when you're talented as you are, and he's 17, yeah. I think he needs to focus on football. You don't want to ruin my career in university. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so I'll be working and. Do you feel like you have pressure from your parents? Yeah. Yeah. They it's want me to go to university, but like at the end of the day, it's my decision. I put it all forward to him, um, and as much as. As much as he is a big fan of the channel, I couldn't get him to sign it. <laughs> but yeah, we should keep working on that. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. But it was then in the board meeting when I told them that, they then offered me this. The effort that you made and have made, not just an effort to learn, but also your understanding of the game and and the perspective that you bring, because we believe in, in, in you know the fearless advocate perspective of every aspect. And every director fills a specific you know, need and commitment, but is aware that the mission is above all. We've discussed this and we've actually want to extend um, 
as a uh, non-executive director moving forward, which means that you'd be a part of you know our director meetings. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, uh, moving forward, and it was unanimous, by the way. So, you're part. We want you as part of the Manchester Six Two family. I really appreciate it. I'm very flattered to hear that I got the unanimous vote. But, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I've really enjoyed my time here, and you, you guys are a, a great group of people as well. Like when I flew here, I've n never met any of you guys. I, I didn't know as much, and, I'm, and I've gone away with not just colleagues, but mm -hmm. good friends. Yeah. And yeah. Hopefully we can build something in the future. I, like I said, you Do know, you accept? I, of course I accept. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This was just a dream. This is exactly what I wanted. The situation where I get a contract and I can continue helping the club and bringing them in the right direction. Welcome to the family, buddy. All right, thank you. Cheers. <laughs> well done. Good job. Do I think that a few people are going to be shocked? You know what I mean? Yeah, because I think they assumed this was a gimmick and didn't realize this was this was a bridge to understanding. And we've crossed the bridge together. and. He's part of the Manchester 62 family, whether they like it or not. Four games left this season and then on to next year. And I'm sure the amount of eyes on this club, it's only going to get better and better.